Howdy gang, in today's episode of Pool School, I am going to teach you how to vacuum a pool the old fashioned way. So let's get going. All right, well, it is a scorching July day here in Arizona. In fact, for the past week and a half, we have been over 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is cooking, but fear not, I am staying hydrated and covered. And hopefully in the summertime, you're doing the same. Anyway, couple things. Number one, I wanna remind you to like and subscribe to this channel. And if you have friends who you think might benefit from servicing their pool themselves and save some money, please feel free to share this channel with them. Okay, so there's basically two reasons for vacuuming your pool the old fashioned way. The first is obvious. You don't have a cleaning system in your pool, meaning you don't have a stay in the pool vacuum or you don't have a pop-up in-floor cleaning system. And in that case, you're gonna need to vacuum your pool occasionally, usually once a week, uh, just to keep the dirt uh, off the bottom of the pool. That depends on how much use you get and how much dust you have blowing around in the air. But that's the obvious reason. May I suggest, if you don't have a cleaning system, that I'm gonna put two links in the, in the um, description of this video. One is a link to my video on pool vacuums. And then the other one is a link on how to add a pool vacuum to your pool using a product called a VacMate. And I would really recommend if you don't have a cleaning system in your pool that you watch those two videos and you seriously considering, consider doing that because the for the amount of time it takes you to vacuum and the hassle, let's say you vacuum and that night you have a dust storm, like in Arizona we have these massive dust storms, that can really be um, demoralizing and really frustrating because if you just cleaned your pool, vacuumed it, and then you have that happen. So it really is worth it to avoid the headache and hassle of having to vacuum your pool manually. So if you can, and you can afford it, may I highly recommend that you go ahead and put a stay in the pool vacuum in your system. Watch those two videos, it'll show you exactly how to do it and you'll be cool. So that's the first reason again for vacuuming your pool. The other reason is not so obvious. Sometimes whether you have a pop-up cleaning system, which sometimes can be fairly inefficient depending on you know how they're functioning, and also even under the vacuum, a stay in the pool vacuum, sometimes your pool needs a little help and you need to help it out. And so sometimes you might need to drop a vacuum in there and vacuum your pool. Now, personally, I haven't vacuumed a pool in at least two years because of the systems that I have set up for my clients, that they all work really good. And if there is a little pocket of dirt or an area that's being missed, excuse me, by the pop-up cleaning system, to if I brush it, the filter will grab it. So it kind of makes up for that. But anyway, those are the two reasons that you are probably going to want to vacuum a pool the old-fashioned way, which is manually. Now, let's talk about the tools that you're going to need. All right. In order to vacuum your pool manually, you're gonna need three tools, and one of them you probably already have. The first thing you're gonna need is a pole, and this is the same pole you're gonna use that you've used for your brushing your pool and netting your pool, so you already have one of these. Just make sure it's sturdy enough and long enough that it can reach at least halfway across your pool, okay? So that's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is a vacuum head like this. You notice this is a really heavy duty one. Uh, I do not know the manufacturer. Um, oh, it's called a ProVac and it looks like it's a model 214. So how's that? Look at that. I don't know if you can see that right there. It says ProVac model 214. One of the reasons I like this, it's very weighty so that keeps it down on the bottom of the pool without lifting so the lighter ones actually kind of can tend to lift. So these are all weights and it holds it down. The bearings on the wheels, they run really smoothly. And the other thing is it's a fairly rigid, the material is fairly rigid and that's really important because the cheaper ones tend to be a little flimsier and when you get suction they kind of go thump like that and then they stick on the bottom of the pool. So I really like this one. So I don't know where to get it. I don't even know they still make it. Um, but that again is it. Again, it's called the ProVac Model 214. So that's the second thing you're gonna need. Lastly, you're gonna need a vacuum hose. This is a single hose that is different than the sectional kind of hoses that you go that go with a vacuum that stays in your pool, like the pool cleaner or a barracuda and things like that. And um, you can get these at any pool service or pool supply store, or you can get them online. But one thing I want you to keep in mind, some of them, all right, say on them, 
connect to VAC head. You can't see that right there, but this end says connect to the vacuum head. So that's what I'm going to connect that end to this vacuum head like this. And again, it's pretty tight, so when I do it, I'm not going to do it right now, but it would plug in like that, okay? And the other end plugs into the skimmer. Now keep in mind, again, if you have a dedicated vacuum in your pool already with a line, which I'm going to show you how to do that one at the end of this video, all right? I'll give you a little amendment so you can see if you have a pool vac already in your pool, how to adjust your pool to if you need to manually vacuum it then. But if you do have one of those, you can just use that vacuum hose for your vacuum head. But if you, if you don't, or the other thing to keep in mind, if you, if you decide that you need to replace those sectional vacuum hoses, don't use one of these single hoses to replace the sectional hoses on your stay in the pool vacuum because this is a lot stiffer, a lot less movable, and it will hinder the movement of your vacuum. So you can use this to vacuum your pool. You can use this also, you can use the sectional ones if you have them to attach to your head to vacuum your pool, but you don't want to use this one for a stay in the pool vacuum. Okay? So now let's go through the steps it'll take you to be able to vacuum your pool manually. Okay. So step number one, I want to find my skimmer. Well, there's my skimmer, and there's the cover for the skimmer. I'm going to lift that off, make sure there's no critters underneath there. I'm going to take out debris, obviously. I'm going to take that basket out of the skimmer, all right? So I want to look down there, and I want to identify the suction hole of that skimmer. So again, remember those two holes. One of those holes goes to the floor drain. The other one, and I'm guessing it's this one here, the one furthest away from the actual pool, is directly suction to the pump, and that's what I'm gonna to wanna to use. Now, if you're not sure, I'm gonna show you how to discover it. So I'm gonna leave everything here right now, I'm gonna head over to the pump, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. I am here at the pump, and this is how I'm gonna identify which one of those suction holes is the right one, because that's what I'm gonna plug one end of my vacuum hose into once I get the head and the rest of the hose in the water. So, here's the suction side of my pump, and this one's easy because this one has this is the this is the the um, piping to the main drain and this is the piping to the skimmer so this is where it's sucking from the skimmer and this is where it's sucking from the main drain so remember that's my off for my jandy valve so i'm going to loosen this and i'm going to close off the main drain which means all the suction is going to be going to the skimmer now i just fire up the pump and as i do that i'm going to go over here and i'm going to look for that swirling vortex or little whirlpool that's gonna tell me, oh, there is my suction. So if you look in this pool, you'll notice, okay, that it's moving. I might have to put my hand down there, be very careful, but I'm gonna reach down there and feel, my sleeve's gonna get wet, which is suction. And guess what? It is in fact the one on this side. So again, there's the pool. So in this one's case, the hole that's farthest away from the pool is my suction to the pump, and that's the one that I am going to actually use for my vacuuming. So I'm gonna leave it running, because I don't really need to go back and shut it off yet. I'll do that after I'm done. So I'm gonna set this down, and I'm gonna talk you through how I put this together. Okay, I am hoping you can see what I'm doing right now. So I've got my pole. First thing I'm gonna do is take my pole, and I'm gonna attach it to my vacuum head like this. And again, it uses those little tabs, just like you do your brush and your, and your net. I'm just gonna click it and lock it in place. And there it is, all right? Now, the next thing I do is I'm gonna make sure that my hose, again, I'm gonna look for the end that it says to attach to the head. If it doesn't have one, if it doesn't have anything specifically right there that says attach to um, vacuum head, I can do either end. But I wanna take this now and I wanna attach it to this part of the vacuum, okay? Just like that. Now what I'm gonna do next is fairly important. I wanna make sure that I submerge this vacuum head and the hose completely underwater so that the hose gets filled with water. So that way there's no air that gets sucked into the pump which could cause it to lose its prime. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn this so you can see. You're probably not gonna be able to see too much, but I'll try to do it gently, okay? One thing I want to make sure is that my, I hang on to my pole so that my pole doesn't go into the pool. So I'm just feeding this hose into the pool, okay? And as I feed it in like this, it's filling up with water. 
So that's what I'm doing. So there's lots of ways you can do this. Some people throw the whole hose in there and fill it up with water. Some do a bunch of other different things. But whatever works for you to get this hose completely filled with water. And again, you notice how it gets all coiled around. That's one of the reasons you don't want to use this kind of hose for a stay in the pool vacuum or you will have a hose that kinks up and coils up like this all the time, okay? So again, I am basically just feeding the, the hose into the pool to fill it completely with water. And now you can see with all this twisting and turning why I don't particularly care to vacuum pools manually and they're just a pain, okay? So here's the end of the hose and guess what? It's filled with water. Now, I'm right at the end of the, my, I'm right here next to the skimmer. So I'm just gonna find the opening of the skimmer Okay, still holding on to my pole. I'm gonna feed it into the opening from the pool to the skimmer, and then all I do, I'm gonna turn it a little bit so you can see, I'm just gonna plug this end into that hole in the skimmer that we identified as the suction. Now I've got suction to my vacuum, and I can basically, pardon me, I can just vacuum my pool. Now, how do you vacuum your pool? Well, kind of like you're vacuuming any room in your house with a vacuum. You want to go slow, kind of backwards and forwards, and you want to take your time, all right? Once you've done it, then you can shut it all down. And I'm not going to have you watch me vacuum this pool because it takes a long time. We're just going to assume I vacuum the pool, and I will restart it when I'm done. Okay, so I am done vacuuming the pool, and I now need to shut it down. Now, I'm not going to, with the pump running, try to... Um, go into that skimmer and disconnect the vacuum hose yet because there's a lot of suction on it and that could it creates so much suction it's really hard to pull out of there so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my pole and my vacuum head in such a way that it's not gonna fall into the pool so I'm gonna turn this video around so you can see that hold on all right so there's my vacuum head the hose is still in the pool because I don't want it sucking air and notice it's still plugged into the skimmer my pool has been vacuumed now I'm going to run over to my pump, okay? One thing that's super important, let the pump run after you're done vacuuming it for about 30 seconds to a minute because that allows any dirty water that is inside the hose to get sucked through and cleared out. That way it doesn't come gushing back in your pool, right? So I'm going to come back here. I'm going to go to my pump motor. I'm going to shut it off, right? Then I'm going to come over here since I'm here to my suction, right? Then my suction selector is on my pool, or my, on my pump, and I'm gonna readjust it so it allows the suction where I wanted it. Make note when you first start to vacuum where this setting was, and then just move it back to there, okay? You might want to empty this pump basket at the same time, all right? Now, at that point, I'm leaving it off. I'm not gonna turn it back on. Now I can go over to my Pool, and you notice chances are this will lift right out now and there it goes just like that now all I have to do is take this out disconnect the head and just pull the hose out and as I pull the hose out what I'm going to try to do is I want to make sure that I that it drains so I'm going to wiggle this if I had two hands I'd do it with two hands but I don't so I'm going to do it with one hand and Notice that took the, the end off. I'll just put that back in in a second because I'm doing one hand. But I want to show you. I'm just basically pulling this out of the pool and making sure that, again, the water is draining into the pool. So that's emptying my vacuum hose. That makes sense? I'm sure it does. Okay. And, I just and then I just disconnect my vacuum head from my pool. I mean my pole. And I replace my skimmer basket into the skimmer, close the lid, and I am done. So a real quick addendum to this video. If you have a pool that already has a dedicated vacuum line and a vacuum that stays in the pool, like the one I'm at right now, then I'm gonna show you a little bit about how we use that line to do our vacuuming manually all right so as you can tell from this video or for this pool there's the stay in the pool vacuum and you notice they have a dedicated hose and in the case of manually vacuuming i'm going to use that exact hose to just plug into that part of my 
vacuum. And again, this is only if, this, if you have a vacuum and you had a really bad storm or something, you just need a little help to help your vacuum out. But again, you notice that hose has a dedicated port right there and it goes right into the wall right there. So I don't have to bring a separate hose out and, and to vacuum this pool. I just disconnect the vacuum that's there from the end of that and take that end of the hose and plug it directly into this. Then I want to come back to the filter. Now this is the critical part. And you'll notice this one makes it very easy. This one shows the skimmer side. That's where it's sucking from the skimmer. And this is sucking to the cleaner. So this is the dedicated vacuum line for the, for the pool, for the cleaner. So normally when I run the system, this is how it runs. With about two thirds to three quarters of the suction going to the cleaner and then the rest going to the skimmer. And you notice, remember, this direction, right, when the handle's back here, this direction with the arrow means close. So the closer I get that arrow to here, the more I'm closing that off. So when I'm vacuuming, if I manually vacuum the pool, what I would do is I would take this, I have to loosen this up to get a little, to get it free, and then I would just close that entire suction to the skimmer. So that means all the suction is going to that dedicated vacuum line, so that way I can get full suction. Then I just fire the pump up and start vacuuming, and when I'm done, I, I let it run for about 30 seconds to a minute to clear out the dirt that's in the hose, and then I shut the pump off, come back and shut the pump off, then I readjust this back to here, to where it was, and we're back in business. Then I just disconnect this from the hose, plug the vacuum back in, and you're done. So I just wanted to show you how you do it with an existing vacuum in the pool that has its own dedicated vacuum line. Now, if you also had one, if you converted a system into a vacuum system with, um, with like a vacmate or plugged it into the skimmer, and what some of my videos have shown that, then you could still just use the hose that you already have for the vacuum that's running around your pool 24 hours a day, right? And you can just do the same thing with that. Just make sure you, de you dedicate all the suction to the skimmer so that it can get enough suction for the vacuum. Okay, before I end this lesson, just wanna let you know, there's usually only two reasons why you might lose suction on your vacuum when you're vacuuming your pool. Both have to do with flow. The first one is that your filter has gotten dirty. Now obviously there's three types of filters, sand, DE, and cartridge. With a sand filter, it's kinda of easy to tell because not only are you going to lose not only are you going to lose suction, but you'll see some dirt blow back into the pool as well. And that's an indicator that you're gonna to have to stop the process, disconnect the, the hose and everything, backwash the filter, and then pick it up from there, reconnect it and start, and, and start from there. A DE filter, you're just gonna lose suction. So in that case, if, if, it's, if it's too full of, of dirt, you're gonna to have to backwash and recharge the DE filter. If it's a cartridge filter and it's and you're losing suction, same thing, you're gonna to have to clean the cartridges. And again, I have videos on all of those, so if you're not sure where to go, you can either look it up or shoot me a text, I mean, shoot me an email and tell me what kind of filter you have and I can give you a link directly to that video on that particular filter, all right? Um, the only other reason you might lose suction is that your, um, your pump basket gets filled with debris. So let's say you're vacuuming up a lot of leaves, okay? In that case, you're probably gonna have to stop. The good thing is you don't have to disconnect everything. Just stop the motor, the pump motor, open the pump basket lid, right, which is near the pump. And I, again, I have a video on that, but it's pretty easy to see, and you kind of saw it on this video too, that pump. Open that up, empty it out, put it back in, start it back up, let it prime, and then you should have your suction back. But those are really the only two reasons you might lose suction, providing you've got all your ports open for suction correctly, the suction's adjusted correctly, as I said in the beginning, on how to set it up, and also your return flow is open as well. So gang, there you go. That's pretty much how you vacuum a pool manually, or the old-fashioned way. Again, if I would really encourage you getting a vacuum and using a vac made in your skimmer to convert your pool. It just makes it a lot easier. The vacuum hoses are just such a pain and it's just a time consuming thing. But if you got the time, it's good to know how to do it. And sometimes your pool needs a little help even with a good cleaning system. So it's nice to know how to vacuum a pool. So again, if you have any comments, feel free to post them in the comments section below or you can email me directly. And again, I'm gonna put my email address right across the bottom here, kennypoolschool at gmail.com. Once again, Kenny 
poolschool at gmail.com. I remind you again to like and subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends who look to, are looking to save a few bucks servicing their own pool. And again, it is July and that means everybody swimming especially when you're coming to fourth of july if you live in the united states or you celebrate fourth of july so please 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 remember my motto have fun be safe and always 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 please watch those kids around water and i will see you next time bye for now